All right, my brothers and the occasional sister, this is Langley Firearms Academy. I'm Braden, and you are here to watch some great content live from my computer. So, I go on a vacation. I'm out for seven week, or seven days in Florida, and I open up my phone, and the 300 hammer drops. So, we've got a brand new cartridge out by Wilson Combat. Didn't see it coming, had no idea it was coming, and now we're going to dissect it. So, I'm back from vacation. Let's dive into it a little bit. As always, this is the full live stream. I've got the comments pulled up over here so I can see what you guys are saying to me if you want to do anything. Um, asking any kind of questions, I will definitely address them and I'll be reading them over here. So that's why I'm looking in this direction. Um, but right now, we're going to dive into the 300 blackout, or excuse me, the 300 hammer. See, I'm already calling it the wrong thing. That's terrible. All right. So basically, guys, what I've got pulled up here is I've got the 300 hammer stats pulled up. And I've just got it to the point where I can pull some information and we can talk about it for a second. Nicholas Dunbar says, you're live. Yes, I am. JH586, hey, what's up? Hey, man, what's up? Hope you guys are doing well. Um, like I said, I hope you guys notice I'm all kinds of tan and very, very good looking. I spent a week in Florida slash Alabama with my family, so that's why I've been kind of out of pocket. And Wilson Combat got a little sneaky on me and dropped a new cartridge and it's right in my wheelhouse of the AR-15 variants. If you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you know I am all about the 2545 Sharps, the 300 Blackout. I'm all about those cartridges and I just find them very interesting. There's something interesting about the AR-15 and diving into it in a different way that these companies are starting to do and I think it's very interesting. Um, Aaron Hairston, hello from Delaware. Hello Aaron. Fresh Fowler, what's up? Nah, you know, not much. Come back from vacation, get back in the swing of things. Have you guys heard about the 300 Hammer yet? Light up in the comments if you have, and I'll kind of talk with you guys about that. But just some housekeeping, some really cool stuff happening for the channel. Um, great things happening. I've got trips lined up for you guys, some great stuff in Idaho. I got some stuff lined up in South Florida. Some amazing content's coming. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for subscribing. Just keep keep uh, checking in. And some amazing stuff's on the way. Can't tell you about it all, but it's just, just good. So the 300 Hammer. Now this is interesting. You guys have seen the channel. Um, the 300 Blackout one of my favorite cartridges just because it's an AR-15 cartridge that shoots a 30 caliber round. If you guys are not familiar, AR-15s shoot a much smaller round, a 223 or a 556. Gavin Littler is a 30 out 6 as big as a 2545 sharps. Uh, 30 out 6 is bigger than a 2545 sharps. Uh, Ariston, uh, Aaron has not heard of the 300 hammer and fresh, not even close. Oh yeah, he's referring to Gavin. Um, so one of the th my favorite things that I like about the 300, um, the Blackout, is that you've got the AR-15, you just change the barrel, you use the same bolt, you use the same upper, you use the same lower, you use almost everything. The exact same, with the exception of the uh, actual barrel, which has a uh, different chamber. So the 300 uh, Blackout, is that, that's, the con that's the concept. You're shooting a bigger round out of an AR-15, which gives you more power on impact. Now, there's pros and cons of both, and I've got tons of videos highlighting all the pros and cons between 300 Blackout and 5.56. But essentially, bigger bullet, same gun, different barrel, same accessories. That's like extremely high level, but that's it. Um, Kingdom 1 says, have not heard of it. Cool, we're about to learn something, Kingdom. Zach Malloy, what's the difference? Why 300 Hammer over Blackout? Excellent question, Zach. Okay, so let's dive in a little bit. First of all, let's start with the very high level stuff. So Wilson Combat came out with this round and they have designed it specifically for their AR-15s. And it, it it's basically a contrast round with the 300 Blackout. Um, 300 Blackout has been gaining in popularity and the reason why is it's a 30 caliber round out of an AR-15, so it's a smaller gun, it's a smaller package, it's lighter, it's easier to maneuver with more punch. Um, another benefit is that you can put a silencer or a suppressor, depending on how you're actually you know referencing it in the market, and you can, um, and you can uh, basically make it almost impossible to hear, especially if you use the larger bullets or the larger projectiles. So that's one of the benefits of the 300 Blackout, and that's why people like hunting hogs with them, because you can't really hear them. Um, now, the 300 Hammer is a little different. So it still uses the same parent case, which is the 5.56 or the 223 round, but it's different dimensions. And I'm not going to go all the way into the dimensions of the actual cartridge for reloading, because I know a lot of you guys don't necessarily re reload, and I will do a video with that in the future. But... What you essentially need to know is this is a competitor to a 300 Blackout or a um, um, AK-47 round of 7.62 by 39. So now, if you go right over here, I've got Wilson Combat pulled up. 
So as you can see, this is just their main page. They're splashing 300 hammer. Wilson Combat is like, you know, it's the main thing on their page right now. So the 300 hammer, as you can see, these are just normal marketing video or marketing pictures, but this is the round right here. Okay, so this is a 30 caliber round in a 5.56 casing, just like a 300 blackout, but there's some differences. I imagine there's powder differences and the projectiles are different types of projectiles, but the overall it's the same concept. So essentially they, they've made their own market into the 30 caliber round into a smaller casing for a 5.56, basically an oversized projectile. Now the 300 hammer, is the exact same principle as the 300 blackout. So it still uses the AR-15 uppers, lowers, handguards, all the accessories. The only difference is the barrel change. And the barrels are about the same price. They're about 200, 300 bucks, but I'm gonna go into that in a second. But the idea here is the exact same thing as the 300 blackout. So if you're familiar with the 300 blackout, basically what you have to do is you just have to get your mind, it's the exact same thing. Larger round, AR-15, but in a different chambering, right? So that's the concept, same, same everything as the 300 Blackout. However, what they're touting is actually some, information, some interesting stuff, and we're going to dive into this. So I'm going to go back over here to Wilson Combat. And like I said, this is wilsoncombat.com. Go back to the information, and that's not what I want. I want, let's see. Actually, that was the right place. There we go. So we dive into the hammer here, and I can just scroll down. Now this is their actual little caption. I'm just going to narrow it with you guys, so bear with me. The 300 hammer was developed for optimal terminal performance and offers near 308 Winchester effectiveness. Now that is important. Okay, we're going to revisit that in a second. Amazing accuracy and low recoil in the lightweight and compact AR-15 platforms, basically what that's saying. Terminal performance testing on over 200 Texas feral hogs is proven to kill much more effectively than the 6.5 Grendel, the 6.8 SPC, the 7.62 by 39, or the 300 Blackout. Now that's a big deal. That's a very high claim. Okay, so basically the 6.5 Grendel is a very, very good cartridge. The 6.8 SPC, it's a pretty good cartridge that would, it's a little more obscure, but it's a good cartridge. 7.62 by 39 is an AK-47 round, so that's a very well-known cartridge. It's arguably the most popularly used cartridge in the world. Or 300 Blackout, which is an AR-15 variant, which has been out for about five years now. Maybe a little less than five years, but basically that's the, that's the breakdown. Due to the optimization of bullet weights to barrel twist, accuracy is proven to be outstanding. Sub one inch groups are the norm with multiple bullet choices of varying applications such as hunting, target shooting, and tactical use. So sub one inch groups, that's sub M um, MOA, that's really, really good, um, especially with a rifle of this caliber. Um, undoubtedly the 300 hammer will be compared to the popular 300 blackout or 762 by 39, again AK-47. As the comparison charts below indicate, ballistics of the 300 hammer far exceed the 300 blackout and 762 by 39 in both velocity and energy when using 110 to 150 grain bullets. Now that's the part that I really wanted to dive in with you guys. They're making some big claims here, some really big claims. And so basically what they're saying is, hey, mine's better, it goes farther, it goes faster, and it hits harder. That's essentially what they're saying. So now, we're going to go over here, and we're going to look at the actual ballistic comparisons. Now, this is where it gets really, really interesting. Um, they didn't just say it's better. They actually provided the data, and I'm interested to see how this all gets tested over the, over the next few weeks or months with the YouTube community. Um, but Twang and Bang did a really good review on the um, 300 Hammer, and it's actually in, on their website. So check that out if you want to see more of the actual shooting. But they actually put their money where their mouth is. They actually put it up here for all the stats. Okay, so basically, the 300 hammers here, 300 blackouts here. So let's just look at this. Same barrel length, um, the exact same grain weight right here. The feet per second is the important thing we're looking for. So with the 300 blackout at 110 grains, it shoots at 23.95. Well, the 300 hammer at 110 grains shoots 26.25. So that's about 270 to 300 FPS or feet per second more. Then you've got right here. This is 1401 foot pounds. This 
the 300 hammer is 1683 foot pounds. So already they're saying, hey, mine's a lot better because it does fly faster and it does hit harder. Then as you continue down the actual statistics, and like I said, it's all available on wilsoncombat.com, they actually are showing some pretty good statistics and improvements. So if I go back over here, same thing, 125, 2175, 125, 2530. 1777 foot pounds, 13, 13 foot pounds. So 400 foot pounds more of energy. And they're saying that it really, really is a big difference. Now an example here is right here. As you can see, the 300 hammer has a solid 300 foot pounds velocity and 400 foot pounds of energy advantage over factory 300 blackout at the muzzle. Sorry, this is feet per second, not foot pounds. Um, now that's a big deal. So what I really, really like about this is they're not just saying, hey, ours is better and it just isn't, trust me. They're actually putting it out there, which I really like. So now let's look at the 762 by 39. Same thing, 16.25 barrel, 125 grain for 300 hammer, 2530. 125 grain, oops, for 762 by 39, 2365. Okay, so an improvement there. Winchester 150 for the AK-47, 2056. 150 Hornady, stop doing that. 2356, or 2300 feet per second. So again, 250. So the 300 hammer is capable of duplicating the proven ballistics of legendary 3030 30 Winchester from comparable barrel length. However, it does not match, wait, excuse me. However, it does this with much more efficiency, taking only uh, 25, 28 grains of powder, which basically is just the powder charge in the bullet or projectile excuse me, the cartridge fires the projectile, um, compared to 34 or 38. That doesn't really matter for you at all. Um, no other caliber that can be fired from an AR-15 platform rifle using a 5.56 or 223 bolt can come close to this ballistic performance. Now, they're not lying on that. Um, but before I go into that, let me check over here. Let's check the comments here. Um, cartridge looks like it's just not cut down. Sorry, I'm trying to read. Here we go. Um, I reload that cartridge looks like it's not cut down. It's been resized for sure. Um, someone sent a message in that was retracted. <laughs> uh, Chris Blake, I've already got a 762 by 39 and a 300 blackout. Why would I need that, yet another cartridge in this exact same vein? Excellent question. I am in the exact same boat. I have an AK-47, 762 by 39, and I have an AR-15 and 300 blackout. I'm in the exact same boat with you. Chris also follows up and says, how does it do anything better with this same platform? And then he also follows up, Chris, me and Chris are on the same page here. Is it enough of a difference to justify the money? And then Jamie Lopez says, what's up? Um, all right, Chris, so let me, let's meld here for a second. I'm in the exact same page you are, exact same book, exact same year, everything. My first thoughts when I heard this came out was, Okay, another 30 caliber round in a 5.56 or 223 uh, shell casing out of an AR-15. It's the exact same. Same concept as 25, 45 sharp. Same concept as 300 blackout. Now we got 300 hammer. Why? And I'm going to be honest with you. The only thing that even really intrigues me here is the velocity. I mean, obviously, you're going to get more foot pounds of impact with more velocity. So that's really where they're getting this power from. Um, the other thing that they're touting is the accuracy. And like I said, I referenced earlier, Twang and Bang made a video, and it's on their website, um, Wilson Combats. The accuracy is pretty good, and Twang and Bang made a really good emphasis on how important that accuracy was. Now, the other thing is, the 300 blackout tends to fall off at around 200 yards, but because the velocity of the 300 hammer is so much faster, it doesn't do that same function. It doesn't fall off, which is really helpful. Now, here's kind of where I'm at. And actually, I'm gonna, let me show you this video um, over here, exactly what I'm talking about. This is the video that I'm talking about, and this is on Wilson Combat, right up here. Um, this is the one from Twang and Bang that I, ref that I'm watch that I watched and I'm referencing. It's a pretty good video. I'm going to be honest, it is. It would, it would be worth your time to check it out. Um, this one, I was not that impressed with, to be honest with you. But basically, the way that it boils down is if, if you're looking for an AR-15 variant that can take out a 300 blackout or can make your AR-15 into a different size caliber, this is a great option. 
really is. Threaded hammer is a great option. Um, they, I'll walk you through the barrels here in a second. But it's it, the price points are similar to the uh, threaded blackout barrels. Now, if you already have a threaded blackout or a 762 by 39 AK47, is it really worth it? I don't know. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't know. Um, am I going to get one? Probably. But not because I need one, because I feel like I owe it to you guys to really put this thing through some testing. And, you know, if I'm going to get one, I might as well get a whole AR-15. So why not, right? Um, but I'll do these videos for you guys, and I'll probably end up getting one and building an AR-15 and taking through the entire journey. But now, for someone who isn't a gun YouTube channel, is it worth it? I don't know. What do you guys think in the comments? Light it up. Let's have a conversation. Um, I don't know. I'll be honest with you, because if you've already got a 300 blackout and you're using it for hunting or tactical purposes, do you really need a 300 hammer? Not necessarily, no. I, I wouldn't say that you do. However, if you have a 5.56 and you've been playing with the idea of doing a 300 blackout, this would be a candidate for you. The 300 hammer is something that I would do as a entry into the 30 caliber round for an AR-15. I would not replace a 300 blackout because to me, the differences just aren't that huge to compare the price points. Even if you were to build an AR-15 in the 300 hammer, which is a lot cheaper than buying one, you're still looking at, to do it right, 900 bucks or easy. Like the cheapest you could do is probably 900. Uh, and that's to do it right. The heavier size, you're going to be about 12 to 13. I see the comments flying here. Um, Dawson 1986-00 seems like a worthless cartridge, just a hot loaded 300 blackout. That's completely possible, Dawson. That is that is honestly that is possible. I haven't actually looked at the um, the actual grains of powder used and if it's actually a hot loaded, if it's a com uh, compressed round or not. Um, Gavin Miller, do you think this cartridge will be pretty cheap to buy in stores? Immediately, no, I do not. Um, I think that the people who are going to use this round are going to be the ones who pay a lot of money for a box of 20 or they're going to be people who reload and I'm actually in the reloader category. So I could probably do this pretty on par with 300 blackout because um, it uses the same projectiles and the same case exact. The case is actually, um, let's see, try finding you on Facebook. It seems like you don't go to it a lot. I don't, and Jamie, that is my fault. I need to start doing that a lot more. I need to do that in Instagram. I just, I've never done that that much. Um, Zap Malloy, yeah, plus it'll take time for all the manufacturers to dock and create new products. Now that, Zach, is an interesting point. Um, and then he follows up and said, it's Wilson, it's going to be costly no matter what. So now we're going to go into that in a second. But let me address that first thing you said, Zach. Um, it will take time to for the manufacturers to adopt and create new products. Now normally you're 100% right, but in this case, there's an exception. Everything that the 300 hammer uses is a typical AR-15 accessory. The only thing different is that barrel. So if you get the barrel from Wilson Combat, you can get everything else from anywhere you want. Arrow precision, anywhere. It doesn't matter. And that's really not going to affect you. Now, if you want a specific barrel from like Fortis Manufacturing in 300 Hammer, yeah, that might take some time. But if you're just looking for the 300 Hammer barrel and then building an arrow around it, nothing has changed in that aspect. So it actually won't be that hard to get accessories for it because they're the same accessories as the AR-15s. Alright, um... Mr. Mintis, I agree if I was considering getting a 300 blackout for the first time, hammer might be interesting. Uh, the lack of available loads makes it out of my reach for now. I hope it does get popular, though. I'm kind of in the same boat, Oculus. Um, <laughs> Oculus, you are the first one that's actually that's actually uh, seen that and commented on that. Yes, InfoWars is in my browser history because I check everywhere because I don't trust any of the news sources. So, yes, very good. Uh, Dale Moultrie, what's up, brother? What's up, Dale? Oculus, I, I should, like... I should like praise you, Oculus, because you're the first person who's actually noticed that and said something about it. Um, so now let's go over to going back to Zach's question about the price points. So let's go back over here to screen capture. All right, let's see here. I can't remember where the barrels are. You know what? When in doubt, search. No, don't want to. There we go. All right, so now this is where it gets kind of cool. So you see the price points here at 233. That's actually not that bad. So 
at $233 for a barrel, a stainless steel one, I'm not really upset with that because that's, that's pretty on par with the price points that you're going to see anywhere with, for, rifle, uh, for rifle aftermarket barrels, especially match grade barrels, which are awesome. And this is an 18 inch, 1 in 15 twist. Now, this is something else that I really wanted to mention. The reason that they are claiming this barrel is so accurate and this cartridge is so accurate is because of that twist rate. Now, if you go back here, the 18 inch barrel with a one in 15 twist, is a very high twist. That's a very high twist rate. And that's, I mean, they can get away with it because it's a light, very fast projectile. It's kind of the same as a 223 wild where it's a one in eight instead of a um, one in seven or one in nine. Um, it's it's kind of in that same category, but anyway, an AR-15 is typically one in seven, one in nine, or one one in eight. Um, Three oh eights can get up into a one in eleven, but one in fifteen is an extremely high twist rate, which makes it pretty accurate, really. Um, as you can see here, it's an M4 style. It's a seven fifty diameter, same thing. Uh, Eighteen inch barrel, stainless steel, four sixteen R. That's good barrel grade. The thread rate's the same. Uh, one in fifteen. Button rifling, that's awesome. The weight's one pound, 12 ounces. This is a typical AR-15 barrel, only with stainless steel and match grade, which is awesome. Now, if I go into the other barrels, should be in here somewhere. I can never find these things when I'm live streaming, but I can always find them when I'm not. I swear to God. Here we go. Man. So now here are all the different barrel rates that they're offering, right? So I mean, as you can see, 233, 276, 233, 276. These are all good price points on these barrels, and they're all stainless steel. They're all very good barrels, very good um, specs, very good everything. Nothing wrong with these price points. So it's not going to price you out of the market. Then you go down here to the upper assemblies. Now this is where it gets kind of crazy. I'll just be honest with you. I would never buy anything from Wilson Combat, um, like a completed AR, just because they're so overpriced. They're good guns, but I just wouldn't do it. But if you look at these prices, this is banana cakes. $1440, $1345, $1295 for a 16-inch. I mean, these are a little, a little redonkulous pricing. So, I mean, this you can build a gun and a half for these price points, which to me is kind of crazy. And then if we go down here to the actual rounds... 30 bucks for 20 box, 20, 20 bucks for 20 a box. Now you notice they actually made these for the individual barrels. That's interesting. These are all for the 18, so they're obviously hotter loads. But yeah, 23, 20, 21, 23. I mean, all these different price points. So they're not that bad. I mean, they're like a buck, what, buck 10, buck 20 around. It's not terrible. But now, so that kind of puts the that what I was saying to Zach earlier. Um, oh, hold on, let me get over here. Um, what is the twist rate on a 270? I cannot remember off the top of my head, Gavin. Um, Jamie Lopez, what's your favorite hunting caliber? Honestly, I've been waiting for more videos from you other than the rest of YouTube channels. You seem to be more honest on the info. Jamie, I appreciate that. I try to be more honest on the info. Sometimes uh, people <laughs> people don't love that when I uh, when I don't say the perfect thing. I, I don't script any of these videos. They just kind of happen. Um, there's going to be a lot more hunting, though, because it's going to end up. Hunting season opens here at the end of October. I'll be in Idaho. Um, there's a lot of really cool things coming, so you stay tuned, Jamie. Voltron Defender of the Universe. Uh, wife was asking today, why do people want multiple guns? I, I don't know. Why do wives want multiple purses <laughs> or shoes? One for every outfit. All right. Zach Malloy, 300 Blackout appeals to me because it was designed around a short barrel, only 300 Blackout. I own her pistols, and that's a valid point. Um... I don't think this is going to be a pistol gun. This is going to be a very specific gun. In fact, we're going to go into in a second how uh, Wilson is marketing these as complete rifles. They'll show you kind of where their mindset's at. Um, Oculo 17.95. Yeah, it's not bad for 20. It's not terrible. Um, it, exactly, Oculo. It's not terrible price points, but these are proprietary rounds. If you reload, money in the bank. If you don't, it could be an issue with content. Um, so... Now, I'm going to wrap this up, and I'm going to go back to the actual platforms that they're actually using. So let's get back in here. See if they've actually got the uh, guns. Here we go. So now, 
What they've got here are the five models that they've come out with. They've come out with an Ultralight Ranger, they've come out with a Ranger, Ranch Rifle Package, Ultralight Hunter, and Tactical Hunter. So just those names, Ranger, Battle, Ranger is a Battle Rifle, uh, Ranch Rifle Package, kind of a Hunter meets Tactical Application, Ultralight Hunter, obviously Hunter, and Tactical Hunter. So they're marketing these as Battle slash Hunter rifles. The other thing that I want you guys to notice here, just in the way they're putting this out, they've got longer range, higher quality scopes on these guns. So these are not short red dot close to uh, close combat guns. These are longer range delivering terminal performance at distance. And that's important to note how they're, how they're portraying it in their marketing photos. Now, if we go back to the actual design, this is my, uh, wait, where is it? Tactical Hunter is my personal favorite, just because it's kind of two awesomenesses. So as you can see, Wilson Combat everything, of course. Um, this is a longer range scope. I can't tell exactly what the magnification is, but it's an adjustable scope, so it kind of goes in and out. If I look at this, look at the price point on this, $31.45 for a non-fluted barrel and $31.95 for a fluted barrel. So what they're saying here is, this gun is the best thing ever, and you're going to pay four grand for it. <laughs> and I'm saying, no, I'm not. Because, again, going back to what we talked about earlier, AR-15s, I can build an AR-15 for seven, eight hundred bucks. Why is yours four grand? <laughs> you know, it's, that's kind of where you get into. Now, I would never, ever buy one uh, completely assembled, but I would buy the one piecemeal, just the barrel from them, and then I would go ahead and do um, all my own accessories. Now, if I go back one page, we can go back to the other ones. So I like that one. This is the Ultralight Hunter. So what they did here was they made this entire gun a little bit lighter with a 16-inch barrel. As you can see, it's a little bit different barrel. So awesome. But this one's $32.95. <laughs> oh, these people are so proud of their guns. All right, so now the Ranch Rifle Package. Let's go into this one. So this is a nice gun. You can see this is a nice gun. Um, what did that say? Nine by 40, I think that's a 44, something like that. Uh, nine by 40, three by nine by 40. Okay, so that's a typical magnification. But as you can see here, threaded for suppressor if you want, or any other muzzle device, and it's pretty much a standard AR to the different caliber. 3650, good Lord. Going back to the Ranger, I've only got one more of these. I actually like this paint the most. But if you go back down here, jeez, this is crazy. <laughs> oh my God, this is crazy. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. 300 Hammer, here we go. So the main point I'm, I'm trying to drive home here is they've got a lot of these guns that are very nice, they're very specced out, but the fact is they are way overpriced for what they are. I'm going to check the comments real quick. Um, best gun shop near Charlotte? Ask Caleb. I, I don't know. I really don't know. I've never actually been to Charlotte, but I want to be. Um, this is cool. Please make streaming a habit. Thank you, Voltron. I'm trying to. Uh, Gavin, do you have a standard scope on your 2545? I do have a standard scope on my 2545. I like it. I mean, I'll probably get a better one, but right now I'm good. Um, if you have that sort of money, more power to you. Get one, party on. Just a barrel, not bad, but Lord have mercy. We'll see combat. Whole guns are nuts. I agree completely. Zach Malloy, that's insane. Going back to the price. Um, Gavin, these prices are sane. I agree. Jamie Lopez, <laughs> Jamie Lopez, overpriced. Yep. So we're all on the same page. It's all overpriced. Um, Austin, not even going to try his last name. I can build a, a BCI, oh, BCI defense, a 300 blackout with vertical hand grip and red dot scope for 1500. Why should I get a 300 hammer? If you don't have either one, just for distance and for a little bit more energy. Uh, Dale Mult, I am with you, but the barrel and the build around it. Cool. So we're, it seems like we're all on the same page here, guys, which is really awesome. I like that. All right, I want to see one more thing I was going to show you guys, and then I'll sign off because I don't want to be too long-winded. Here we go. This is the last piece. All right, so this is actually what catches my attention the most when I first started diving into this. Um, doo -doo -doo. All right, so right here. 
The above chart shows the large advantage the 300 Hammer has over the 300 Blackout, or 762 by 39 at common hunting ranges, which is like 100 to 250 yards. The 300 Hammer has 18% more retained velocity, 40% more energy, and 56% and flatter trajectory than the 300 Blackout at 200 yards, which is a big deal. I'm going to give it to him. That is a big deal. So going back to my original point, we've we dove into everything from the prices on the barrels, the whole gun packages, to the cartridge themselves, the idea behind it. The way that I boil this down, if you have a 300 Blackout, I wouldn't get a 300 Hammer. Unless you have a YouTube channel and you owe it to your audience to do it. Um, on the other side, if you only have a 556 and you've been playing with 300 Blackout, take a look at the 300 Hammer. It is actually appealing if you don't already have that cartridge in an AR-15. And that's, I mean, honestly, that's kind of the way that I look at it. Now, something else that they did a really good job on, and I'm actually very impressed with them, and I'm not going to go through all this, but if I go back to um, the page I was just on, oops, I'll show you this, and I'll wrap this bad boy up. So this is where I just read this comment to you, right? That's the claims. If you click on this 300 hammer comparison chart, which I just did, they actually pull everything out from a range distance, and I might graph this out just because I'm a, I'm a nerd, I'm a data nerd, and they give you the velocity, the energy, and the trajectory. Now this part is interesting. 200 rounds is only minus 4.3 inches in drop. So that means, it, okay, so it's zero for 100. At 150, it's one and a, one and a 1.2, and then here is where your ideal range would be, 200 yards. At this point, you're not gonna really hunt anything. At this point, you're definitely not gonna hunt anything. So it essentially is a, a hot loaded 300 blackout. Now, if I go down here to 300 blackout, minus 6.7, okay? So this is the exact same grain weight. Here's where it boils down, and this is the most important thing. If you're hunting at 200 yards, which would be right here, this is the max range. If the 300 hammer only drops minus 4.3 inches, and the 300 blackout drops 6.7, okay, from a percentage standpoint, yes, that's a big percentage. From an actual deer standpoint, I mean, a deer torso, the target, the heart, and the lungs that you're aiming for are about that big. Can it make a difference? Yes, it can. But if I'm aiming right in the middle of this circle that I'm making with my hands and I miss by two inches, I'm still effectively taking down that deer. And that's the way that I would look into it, right? So if I go back to the screen capture, again, there's the 300 blackout, not that much difference, 2.4 inches. I go down here to the uh, 762 by 39, 5.6. So it's actually closer than the 300 blackout. And that's kind of where I would leave it. That's where I would make my decision. Is it really worth it? Base it on the data. The data is where it shines every single day, all day. It's about the data and actual reloads and all the different factors. The other thing that might come into a, um, play here is the accuracy. Now, if the accuracy is really that much better, and like I said, check out that video on the website from Wilson Combat from Twang and Bang. That might be something, but I don't know if it's going to make as much of a difference to completely abandon the 300 Blackout for a brand new cartridge. And that's my own opinion. I'm going to check the comments here real quick. Let's see. Um, Beaverwood Outdoors. Can we get more calibers for the AR-10? <laughs> uh, you don't like uh, the 6.5 in the AR-10? And the 308? I love a 308 myself. That's a nice, nice caliber. Um, Jason Clark, Palmetto State Armory has the best prices around. Completely agree. My last live stream was looking through that website. Caleb, 10-4, uh, thank you so much for the reply. No problem. Um, -da -da. Chris Blake, not that much longer range. No, for long range 30s, I've got some of those too. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of with Chris. Chris and I are on the same page on this. Um, Jason Clark, this is, this is such a true statement. I will never buy another AR-15. It's so much cheaper to build one. Amen. If my channel has helped anyone, I hope it's helped you there. Um, old Red High. Old Red, uh, I was just thinking about getting a 300 Blackout Upper for my AR-15. Now this would be something for you. Go back if you're just now joining in Red. Watch this whole live stream and I'll, I break down the 300 Hammer a little more in depth. Uh, Voltron Defender of the Universe. Does Ruger let you build ARs because they're kind of cheap? Um, not not really. <laughs> no, you could buy the accessories and build your own, but not really. All right, so what I'm going to do now is jump out of my live stream in a few moments. Um, I'm going to leave it open. If you guys want to ask me any questions, I'll leave it open for about five more minutes. Kind of just 
chit chat with you guys and I'll even bring the uh, live stream over here so I'm actually looking at you guys. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think. Here we go. All right. Uh, Zach Malloy, if you want more energy at 200 to 300 yards, go 308. Um, very true, Zach. You're not wrong. However, I will challenge you on one thing. The AR-15 is significantly lighter than the 308, the AR-10. So if weight is an issue and you're in backcountry hunt, back hunting or backcountry hiking, that might play in. Just saying. I, I think that the AR-10 is by far a better platform as well. You've got a lot better equipment, but... That is what they would say if they were to say, well, why would you do a 308 when you just do a lighter platform that's a battle rifle size? Nah. And plus, building an AR-10 is difficult with the different patterns um, that you have to take into consideration and the different... Um, I can't remember what I'm trying to say. How they all fit together exactly is... I can't think of it. Jason Clark, I learned that from you, my brother. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate it. Um, oh, I will make a little announcement for you guys. If you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you know that I'm a grunt style affiliate. So basically what happens is I wear their stuff. If you guys like it, you go and check out, actually it's on, it's on this arm. Guys, check out in the live feed, the actual description. You can click on a link which gives you guys, I think, 15% off and it helps me out for my channel and helps me make more videos. If you guys like any of the shirts or they got some cool hats, if you like anything, check it out below. And if you guys want to, buy a shirt. It helps me out, makes them happy, makes me happy. Just throwing it out there. If you guys want, I'd love the support. Zach Malloy, true, I hear you. And he's talking about the 308 that I just mentioned. Um, I mean, it's the gun world's a cool world, especially with the AR-15s. And I like the 300 hammer. I do like it. But I just don't know if it's for the everyday gunner. I don't. Um, definitely for somebody who is going to be in the scenario of 300 blackout or 300 hammer, definitely. I'm not, I'm not going to say that you need to have an AR-15, a AR-15 300 blackout, an AR-15 300 hammer, and a 762 by 39 AK-47, just because I do. But <laughs> um, I also have you know professional reasons to do it. It's a tax write-off. So, <laughs> oh man, Beaverwood Outdoors. How light can you get an AR-10? Um, pretty light. I mean, I can't say it's going to be around seven or eight, maybe nine pounds, but I don't really like to do real light AR 10s for two reasons. One, I'm a fairly large guy. I can handle an extra pound or two on my rifle. Um, two, I have better accuracy with heavier barrels. They last longer. There's a more longevity and the recoil is less felt recoil. If I were to hand that gun to someone else. So with a heavier gun, it absorbs more of that energy coming back on your shoulder than an actual uh, bolt gun, and also than a lighter AR-10. So that's one of the reasons. Um, SLP Blackout, is the 300 worth it if you don't hunt? Um, yes, in a very specific context. Um, the 300 Blackout is one of those rounds where if you don't hunt, it, it, it basically it, it gives you the ability to if you want to, but if you don't, it's an excellent home defense cartridge. You can you can fit it with a suppressor and make it almost non uh, non audible. Like you, it's amazing what you can do with the heavier rounds. Um, it's also a very impactful, devastating round at close range, which is awesome as well. Um, and it doesn't carry through to a lot of real long distances for home defense or anything like that. So if you're looking for a 300 blackout purpose, I wouldn't take it to the range and shoot it. I would use it for a home defense. But that's the beautiful part: the the rounds and the calibers don't really matter because the platform is the exact same. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I, I love my 300 Blackout. Gavin Littler, how long did it take you to clean up all the watermelon bits after you demonstrated the 2545 sharps on the watermelon? A long, a long time. <laughs> a really long time. Uh, I actually need to change the thumbnail video on that because I thought that was the coolest video, but it's not It's not taking off like I thought it was going to, so I'll mess with that. Old Red, I use my AR for uh, coyote hunting. It's a very good reason. In fact, the... Um, 223 Wild is what I would use for an AR-15 um, hunting rifle for coyotes. Jamie Lopez, do you ever uh, do videos or what do you think about the 38 Super and what and was your caliber of choice on a pistol? Uh, my caliber of choice on a pistol, I I'll be honest with you, they they all have their own attractiveness. Um, if I'm going to be right in the middle, I really like the 40 caliber, and I know a lot of people hate it, but it does have more energy transfer than a 9 mil, and 
needs a bigger round. It just it make it make big hole. <laughs> um, nine mil is a great round too. If it it really depends on what gun I have with me. I have a nine mil and I have a forty cal, and whichever one I have with me, I'm going to be able to do the work I need to do. So I prefer like the forty forty five range because I like a bigger caliber. But nine mil is just as effective. If I have to do it two or three more times, then that well, just means I have, I had to do it two or three more times. Uh, one of my favorite builds was my Bushmaster 450 Thumper. That, that's a big old round. <laughs> Gavin, have you ever shot a Taurus Judge? Yes, I have. I've shot the Taurus Judge, uh, the Taurus Judge with the 45 Long Colt and also the 410 Shotgun shells. Um, that it's interesting. I like the 45 Long Colt better just because it's a single projectile and it's not a shotgun out of a pistol. But yeah, shot them both. The Governor is actually the one I would get. The Smith & Wesson Governor over a Taurus Judge just because the Governor can do 45 ACP, 45 Long Colt, and the 410 Shotgun Shell, which I like a little bit better um, just because I like options. But it's the same gun, pretty much. Um, Jamie Lopez, same thing I was saying, brother. 40 cal, me too. So yeah, I got some 40 cal, bros, 40 cal bros out there. Not everyone's a 9mm uh, priest. Mercenary? No. Missionary. Missionary. There, there's the word. Mercenary. Missionary. Whatever. All right. I'm going to wrap up here in a second, so get the last ones in here. Um, Old Red 50 Beowulf was a fun build for me. That's also a fun build to put in an AR-15. And I am going to, I will say I'll cap it at 43 minutes. I'll do a minute and a half more. Um, but yeah, no, I, I love the AR-15. I just want to bring it home um, and kind of wrap it up in a nice little package. I really like the AR-15, and I love the fact that I can put 30 caliber rounds. I don't know if the 300 hammer was late to the party or not. I'm going to be honest. The 300 blackout kind of took that market pretty heavy. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of feeling, kind of feeling like they were late to the party, and I think the 300 blackout will outdo the 300 hammer only because it was first there, and it very, very similar ballistics. Uh, Sniggle Frizz, I'm a 42. That's right. It's good stuff. Zach Malloy, 10 millimeter. Okay, li listen, Zach. Okay, let's talk about something real quick. You like Air 10s, and you like 10 millimeters. You're either a huge dude like me, or you just got a thing for large calibers. What is it? John Savage, 9 millimeter, most common, but love my 45. That's a good stance, John. I like that. All calibers need love. Everyone does. All right. I'm going to wrap this down in about 15 seconds. Uh, Jamie, 40 cal way better than 9 mil. Love 45 cals too. Good stuff, Jamie. But guys, thank you so much for partying with me tonight. Watch, checking out the 300 Hammer. Please, if you, uh, if you would like to support the channel, check out Grunt Style. The link is in the description field. Just click on it. You get a discount of like 15% and you help me out. So that would be amazing. Help the channel grow. Uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. And I hope uh, hope you guys keep spreading the news around, throwing it out, throwing out Langley Firearms Academy. And I can't wait to bring the more stuff to you. And until the next time, I'll see you later. Spraden signing out.